7 Psychological Tricks to Make a Woman Totally Crazy About You When it comes to sparking a woman's interest in you, there's a small part that has to do with your physical appearance and, obviously, whether you're her type. However, as many men have discovered, that only gets you so far. It's not what truly makes a woman fall in love with you, chase after you, or become obsessed with you. It's all about how she feels when she's with you and, equally important, how she feels when she's away from you and thinking about you. In this video, I'm going to share with you 7 psychological tricks to make a woman obsess over you. Hello, I'm Christopher, and I want to share with you some knowledge that can make a difference in your interactions with women. It's about more than just sparking a woman's interest. It's about taking the attraction she feels for you and turning it into something extraordinary. We want to reach the point where she starts to imagine a future with you, experiences a deep connection, and goes home almost obsessed with you. Why? Because in today's world, it's crucial to achieve that. If she's not thinking about you when she's at home, it becomes challenging to hold her attention long enough for her to become your girlfriend. You need to act quickly to create the right kind of connection with her before another man approaches her. She forgets about you, and you never progress in the direction you desire. But wait. Here's the most interesting part. The last trick I'll reveal is undoubtedly the most important of all. So I urge you to stay until the end because that final strategy could be the game changer you need to succeed in your relationships. Before we dive into it, I want to remind you not to forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to receive more valuable content like this. Now, let's get started with the video. So, the first one is called Earned Validation. What is validation? It's how someone makes us feel about ourselves. Now, here's the secret. Many men try to validate a woman too quickly and in a common way. They give her unearned validation. What does that mean? It means that when a man tells a woman how attractive she is or how beautiful her eyes are, for her, who has heard that a million times, it just doesn't make her feel anything. She's become almost desensitized to those compliments. I remember experiencing this myself years ago. I was in a third world country, I won't mention the name not to point fingers at anyone, but at that time and in that place, just for being a young American guy with blue eyes, girls would constantly approach me, flattering me for my looks. At first, it was exciting, but by the third day, it was enough. It stopped giving me pride, it became superficial, and it didn't truly validate me. There came a point where it felt almost fake, and that's how most compliments and attention feel to a woman. They don't feel real because she's not actively doing anything to deserve them. And that's where earned validation comes into play because that means much more to a woman. But what do I mean by earned validation? It means when she's making an effort, and you recognize that effort. When she's trying to impress you, and you're gradually impressed. That's much more rewarding for a woman because she feels like she's winning you over. Now, how can you demonstrate that? There are some effective ways. One of them is what I call the spontaneous compliment, the one that doesn't seem planned, that doesn't seem like you have an ulterior motive or that you're trying to win her over or impress her. For example, while you're chatting, and she tells you about her latest backpacking trip, you can say, wow, you're incredibly cool. You're an adventurer. And you're simply expressing unfiltered what you think, which appears genuine to her and that feels like earned validation because you're not saying, you're pretty, just because you want something from her or want her to like you. You're being authentic, and that gives your compliment real value. Another example of earned validation is active listening. This is something most men don't do when talking to a woman. Instead of waiting to ask her questions or tell a similar story, you really need to listen attentively and go deeper. You want to nod while you listen, and when she's done speaking, don't immediately say, that's amazing. Instead, say, I understand, and ask a deeper question like, how did that make you feel? Or, tell me more about that. When you do this, she feels like you're genuinely interested in what she has to say, and that's a form of validation. If you've ever had someone who really listens to you and wants to know more, you know how valuable that is and how good it feels to be around that person. Most men don't do that, when they're with a woman, they're just waiting for their chance to speak and try to impress her. But the reality is, when she's trying to impress you, and you're gradually impressed, that's much more rewarding for her. 
Another quick way to show earned validation is instead of saying directly, you're amazing, or you're so adventurous, you do it in the third person. While you're talking, you can say, I was telling my friend about that story you told me the other day. By validating her story in front of a third person, the intensity is increased even more. If you've ever heard someone talk about how funny you are in front of another person, you know how rewarding that is. So, doing it in front of a third person will be even more powerful for her than if you simply did it directly to her. That's earned validation. Now, let's move on to the next technique you need to master when it comes to triggering obsession and using psychological strategies to make a woman obsess over you. Trick number two is called, two steps forward, one step back. This approach involves strategically advancing and retreating. And this really works to create tension and anticipation because, for a woman, tension and anticipation are prerequisites for her to become obsessed and feel the desire to chase a man. For women, it's all about building expectations in their minds. Will it happen? Will it not happen? The mental game they play with themselves is much more exciting. That's what creates tension, both in terms of the relationship itself and sexual tension. Let me give you an example of sexual tension. If you're talking to her, and during the conversation, you touch her hand briefly, and it feels good to her, then you withdraw and don't touch her for a while. Because now, in her mind, she's waiting for that contact again. If you just kept holding her hand throughout the conversation, eventually, the tension would dissipate. So, it's always important to take two steps forward and one step back. This also applies to other actions, like maintaining eye contact with her while you talk, having a flirty conversation, and then having that moment where you gaze deeply into her eyes, maintaining eye contact, and then stepping back and resuming normal conversation. Always two steps forward and one step back. This principle can also be applied to the development of the relationship. If things are progressing at a certain speed in a relationship, you're spending time together, and texting is gradually increasing, what you can do is escalate the intensity and then pull back a bit. Because now she will be expecting more. If you keep constantly increasing the frequency of texting, for example, sending her messages two or three times a day, it becomes common and predictable. You want to get to that point and then take a step back, making her crave more. Women love the buildup, the mental game, and the romantic tension they should feel. Remember this simple trick in your mind. Two steps forward, one step back. Whether it's to build sexual tension, as I mentioned earlier, or to advance in a relationship. For example, if you've spent two weekends in a row with her, two steps forward, the next weekend you could make plans with your friends and not see her, step back. This keeps her interest and commitment alive. The next thing we're going to discuss in terms of triggers is something I call, attractive vulnerability. Vulnerability. This is something you might have heard me talk about before, but it's really a way of being open with a woman, of revealing things about yourself, humanizing yourself, but also doing it in a fun and attractive way. I always say the best example of this, the best thing you can do if you want to learn how to be cool and vulnerable at the same time, is to watch interviews with celebrities because a celebrity obviously has a publicist they pay millions of dollars a year or whatever it is to craft this kind of stuff for them because their whole job when they're being interviewed is to make the audience obsessed with them, to make the audience fall in love with them. When Matthew McConaughey is interviewed or George Clooney is interviewed or Justin Bieber is interviewed on any talk show, they want the audience to fall in love with them because that's their job, that's why they're on that show, to get people to say, I really like him, I want to see his movie. So, what they've learned is that if Matthew McConaughey goes on stage and tries to impress you by talking about his giant mansion, his yacht, and his sexy model girlfriend, we're not really going to like him. So instead, he goes up and tells funny anecdotes about his life that make him seem like a real person. That's what you need to do with women because there has to be a certain level of openness, but you have to do it in a fun way. An example that comes to mind is when I was talking to a girl about movies, and she told me she cried at the end of Titanic, and I said, oh, yeah. I told her, the only movie I ever cried in, and it was the worst experience, was when I was in college, and I was there with eight of my friends watching Armageddon. And then there's the final scene where Bruce Willis pushes Ben Affleck and sacrifices himself, 
and there I was with all my friends, and I started sobbing, trying to hide it, and all my friends were looking. That's an example of attractive vulnerability. Vulnerability isn't something that's about real vulnerability, where you're telling a woman that your father didn't love you enough when you were a child. That's not something you should do early on. Attractive vulnerability is those slightly embarrassing confessions you make that she can relate to, that show her you're opening up a little around her. Again, if you want to learn this, you can watch late night talk shows or just any kind of celebrity interview because they do it, they bombard you with this. You won't see a celebrity interview where they don't use this idea of attractive vulnerability, which shows that it's powerful because celebrities don't go on these talk shows unprepared. They have scripts that they're paid a lot of money to have because they know it works to make the audience obsessed with them. So, the next thing we want to do, and we just mentioned the word, audience, is to be a good audience. This is something simple, and I already mentioned it when talking about the idea of earned validation, and it's this idea that most men, when they talk to a woman, are so caught up in their own heads thinking about what they want to say next and how they can impress her. But in reality, we enjoy being around someone who is a good audience. That brings us to the next psychological trick, humor. When it comes to attracting someone, humor plays a crucial role. Most people want to be with someone who makes them laugh, finds their quirks funny, and eagerly anticipates their next witty remark. It's a wonderful feeling when we become the center of attention and become addicted to the company of that person. However, humor isn't just about making someone laugh all the time, it also involves giving the other person a chance to shine. We don't want to be just the supporting character, we also long to be the star at certain moments. That's why it's important to become a good audience for each other. When she shares a story, we must show genuine interest, smile as it unfolds, and tune into her energy. If she changes the tone and shares something more serious, we should relax, listen attentively, and show receptivity. The truth is, people love being around those who know how to be a good audience, and unfortunately, there aren't enough men who do it. Many are too focused on their own stories and jokes, not paying real attention to what the other person is communicating. So, let her shine and enjoy the genuine connection that's created when you become that exceptional audience. So, the next technique is called, Partners in Crime. It's about having inside jokes and doing things that make both of you laugh, things that other people aren't aware of. I remember a moment when I was spending time with a girl, and she hated it when someone said, literally, so sometimes, if someone was talking and used the word, literally, I would give her a look, and she had to stifle her laughter. Or sometimes, if I was talking to someone who had just said it, I would start using the word, literally, in an exaggerated way to make her laugh. It became our inside joke. Other inside jokes are ways to create this camaraderie, like coming up with a mission or getting her to do something slightly out of her comfort zone with you. When you create inside jokes and share special experiences, you're building a unique and exclusive bond between both of you. These intimate moments strengthen the camaraderie and generate a sense of deep connection that goes beyond simple physical attraction. Imagine this situation. You're driving in the car after spending time together, and suddenly, you come across a majestic mansion with an open house. In that instant, a mischievous and exciting idea arises. You whisper in her ear, how about we go in and pretend we're a wealthy French couple? A gleam of complicity lights up in her eyes, and without thinking twice, you embark on this fun adventure. As you cross the threshold of the mansion, you step into a world of fantasy. You play the role of an affluent couple, posing as interested buyers for the house. While interacting with the real estate agent, you charm them and ask humorous questions, creating an atmosphere of fun and camaraderie. Every gesture, every shared smile, reinforces the connection between the two of you. This unique experience will become an unforgettable memory for both of you. When the girl leaves, she'll carry with her that special treasure. The memory of having lived something extraordinary with you. These shared experiences are what forge deep and lasting bonds. It's not just about being a handsome or funny guy, but about creating magical moments that only the two of you understand and cherish. It's true that there are many good-looking and funny guys out there, but by combining all of these techniques and elements, you're positioning yourself as someone unique and memorable in her life. 
you're creating an emotional experience that goes beyond superficialities. She'll be drawn to that special camaraderie you share and will crave more of those magical moments that only you can provide. Remember, success in seduction isn't about ticking off a checklist of physical attributes or being the funniest person in the room. It's about building an authentic and deep connection with the other person. By applying the partners in crime techniques, you're opening the door to a unique and fascinating connection. So, don't hesitate to explore these special dynamics and enjoy the thrilling journey of seduction. Let's take a short break while you subscribe to the channel. Ready? Let's continue. Allow me to delve deeper and continue with the next highly effective psychological trick to attract any woman, and that is, revealing intimate things. This technique is based on the power of the bond that is created when one person shares something intimate with another. It's a key aspect of the psychology and the art of seduction. Imagine being in a conversation with her and deciding to reveal an intimate facet of yourself. You could say something like, you know what, sometimes when I'm feeling down, I go on Facebook and look up old classmates who are doing worse than me, or I check out who my ex is dating and judge them. I think things like, I'm more attractive than that guy, or I'm more successful. Have you ever felt tempted to do something like that? These confessions reveal thoughts and behaviors that are not normally admitted to just anyone but that we've all experienced at some point. The goal is to get her to share her own intimate experiences and thoughts, which will further strengthen the connection between you. The fact that she opens up and admits personal things in front of you creates a sense of trust and camaraderie. This act of vulnerability intensifies her interest in you and makes it more difficult for her to withdraw, as she reflects on having shared intimate details with you. The underlying psychology in this technique lies in social bonding theory. According to this theory, when two people share personal information and feel understood and accepted, a deeper emotional bond is established. By revealing intimate things, you're showing your authenticity and creating a safe space for her to do the same. As the emotional connection grows stronger, her attraction to you will increase. It's important to note that this psychological trick should be used responsibly and respectfully. It's not about manipulating or taking advantage of the other person's vulnerability but about fostering a genuine emotional connection based on openness and mutual trust. Remember that psychology plays a fundamental role in the dynamics of seduction. By understanding the emotional and social mechanisms that influence our interactions, you can strategically use this knowledge to cultivate more meaningful and deeper relationships. Dare to explore the power of intimate connection and feel how the emotional bond strengthens on your path to success in seduction. Now, are you ready to hear the last trick? The final point we will address is called dissonance, and it's truly powerful. Dissonance can be misunderstood and used manipulatively, which is not our goal. I'll show you how to apply it ethically. Dissonance occurs when there are conflicting ideas in our minds. After having coaching calls with men for 15 years, I can assure you that obsession with a woman originates from dissonance. It means that a woman gives you signals that she likes you but then gives you signals that she's not interested. That's dissonance. For example, she may talk about the future and make comments about how she'll take you to her sister's wedding in six months but then she constantly cancels plans with you. These conflicting ideas drive us crazy because our human brains need answers and coherence. Uncertainty and lack of conclusion make us very uneasy. Every time we experience this dissonance, our emotional investment in the other person increases. It's crucial to understand that applying dissonance alone without genuine emotional investment from the woman can be a common mistake. You'll hear advice like, make yourself desired, but I always say that if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one around to hear it, does it make a sound? The same applies when most men try to make themselves desired because if the woman isn't paying attention or isn't interested in you, she won't even notice your efforts. Making yourself desired works when she is genuinely interested in you, when she's thinking about you, and when you've created that prior emotional bond. That's when you introduce dissonance into your mind, generating a strong desire for you. You'll be the man she constantly calls, seeks, and initiates plans with. Plus, unlike women who talk about a future with you but never commit to meeting you, 
she'll always be available to spend time together. Many men find it difficult to transition from dating to establishing a long-lasting relationship because if they're not implementing the strategies we've discussed here, they face overwhelming competition. However, the reality is that women initiate relationships every day. If you go to Facebook, as I mentioned before, you'll find evidence that supports many of the arguments I presented. It's often mistakenly thought that women are only attracted to wealthy or extremely attractive men, but when I look at the partners of the most attractive women I used to interact with during my university years or in my job at a bar 10 years ago, I can assure you that's not the case. Rarely is it an incredibly attractive man, sometimes it might be, but in most cases, it's an average looking man. While you can't judge someone's income level, you can assess things like where they live. If they don't reside in an expensive area, it's evidence that they didn't marry an extremely rich man. So, what attracted her to that man? It was all those qualities and actions we mentioned. That's why she's willing to stop using dating apps and have a relationship with him. If you've enjoyed this video, I invite you to subscribe, leave me a comment, and let me know what topic you'd like me to discuss in my next video.